We are grateful for all that we are given and all God gives to us to be able to sustain each day. And we offer back to God a part of who we are and what we are and what we have so that we can turn around and give it to those who have need. And so we pray that God will bless our time, our gifts, our tithes, our offerings in the name of Christ. Amen. Mm. Walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but a smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sigh or a tear can abide when we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. How I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Then in fellowship sweet. We will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side on the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy. To trust and obey, trust and obey. I invite you to remain standing as we share together our shared reading, but while you're doing that and while you're turning to that, I want to welcome our virtual congregation who is joining us today. What a blessing it is to have you with us and to join us in progress as we share together in our worship service today. What a blessing it is to have you each and every week or whenever you see this and to share life together. Today is a very special day in that we are celebrating uh, the culmination of Wells Fest with our friends from Grace House Ministries. And during the service here in a few moments, 
you'll get to hear a lot more about that. Let me just say welcome. Join us, we share together in our shared reading. Our shared reading this morning comes from Psalm 104. We will be looking at verses 1 through 13, and it can be found in your hymnal on page 826 and 827. Would you join me as we read responsibly? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You are clothed with honor and majesty, and cover yourself with light as with a garment. You make the clouds your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. You set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be shaken. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place which you appointed for them. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild passes which their earth. Above the springs, the birds of the air have their nest. They sing among the branches. From your lofty place. Amen. You may be seated.
Amen and amen. Um, what a blessing and what a challenge and what a call for us today. Today's scripture lesson comes from Mark's gospel once again. Uh, today is also chapter 10 once again. As we continue this journey with Jesus and his disciples toward Jerusalem, as Mark records it in the gospel lesson, I invite you to stand with me as you're able, wherever you are, and, and share together this reading, Mark 10, verses 32 through 45. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed. And those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priest and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and will spit upon him and flog him and kill him. And after three days... He will rise again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one on your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized But to sit at my right hand or at my left hand is not mine to grant, but is for those for whom it's been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom you recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it's not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man has come not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Please join me as we pray. Lord, we give you thanks for your word and the ways that it speaks into our lives and challenges us and strengthens us for our journey. Lord, speak to us and speak through me and help me to say what you once said this day. For we pray it in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. So as the continuing discourse of teaching that Jesus has for his disciples as he has set his face to go to Jerusalem. And here it appears Jerusalem is actually in sight on their journey. And Jesus is walking ahead of them, and they're amazed. And yet they're also afraid. It's a good descriptive term of following Jesus, I would think. Amazed and afraid. That's where I find myself quite often as I take this journey and move forward. But Jesus takes this time, as we've shared in the previous weeks, to say how you need to be ready to to live out God's kingdom's work on behalf of God. And so he continues that instruction. This is not only a word that we know was written and to tell a story about Jesus and the disciples and Jesus' teaching of those early disciples, but we also know that Mark's gospel was written in the first century A.D. And it was written to help the church that was struggling to know how to live its life in the world it was in, live out that life of following Jesus and what this kingdom's work now means. And so it's not only instructive for us to hear the great stories of how Jesus told those early disciples they should live and how 
we catch on real quick that they don't understand it at all and don't catch it and don't get it. Not at this point anyway. But it's also a chance to hear how the early church kind of struggled with who they were and what was going on in life as they were living out their faith. And so today's story. This is now the third time that we hear Jesus in these short two or three chapters of Mark's gospel talk about his own passion and death and resurrection and to tell his disciples this prediction of what's going to take place and it's going to take place soon and immediately in their lives. As as he begins to teach and as we watch this movement in Mark's gospel, we remember that the first time Jesus began to share this message with them about his own prediction of his own death and beating, his own beating death and, and burial and resurrection, that Peter, Simon Peter, stood up first in that occasion and said, Oh no, Lord, it's not going to be that way. We don't have to do it like that. He rebuked. Jesus and Jesus in turn said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Or you're thinking in worldly terms, earthly terms, and not godly terms. The second time Jesus shares this with his disciples, immediately there breaks out a, dis- a conversation among the disciples about which one of them was going to be the greatest in the kingdom. And Jesus said, the greatest of you is going to be the last and the servant. And he took a child. And now we hear Jesus making this prediction for the third time. And here in chapter 10, verses 35 and following, or 32 through 35, Jesus is a little more detailed about how this is going to happen and what's going to happen and what they were to expect. And we would expect the disciples to take that in and say, oh, okay, now that's the third time I've heard this, so it must be something to it. Let us, you know, get ready for this or move forward. And what happens is immediately two of those disciples, brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, sons of thunder, we always like to call them, came to Jesus. And they said to him, we want you to grant us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus says, What is it that you want from me? Lord, when you come into your glory, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at the left hand so that we can enjoy your glory with you. And Jesus said, are you able to really follow me from here? Are you able to drink the cup that I will drink? The blood that will be poured? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to be baptized with? And James and John, I think, get caught on by this and said, yes, we are able. And Jesus said, well, it's going to happen to you. But to grant you position and glory is not mine. It's reserved for what God has in store. It's interesting that the next thing we see in this passage is that the other ten disciples get mad. (laughs) They get mad. Now, I don't know if they got mad because James and John had asked such a stupid question in an important moment. There are times that I've done that with people. Don't be asked. Did you not listen to what he said? Why are you saying that now? Or... If they got angry because they thought maybe they had a chance at those positions at the right and the left. But what we do know is that Jesus took this moment to once again share some important insight for us and for them. It's interesting that as I read this passage this week, the thing that kept coming to my mind that was going on with the disciples in this moment was the question, what's in this for me? What's in it for me? What do I get? What can I gain? And I think it's a question we still ask. What's in it for me? The early church struggled 
I'm sure, with the same dilemma. Why should we live this life? Why should we continue to follow Jesus when we're being persecuted? Why should we continue to talk about this new relationship with God when all it causes is struggle and it causes me to be able to give of myself? And yet that's the point. The whole story, I think, testifies to the widespread and persistent condition of the church that remains enamored with power and position. Jesus' words are very hard to hear and to obey. It's as if here in this passage, Jesus says, you know what, guys? It's not about the end. It's not about going to glory. And it's not about what you gain in glory. What I'm really trying to teach you now is the value of the God who is with you right here and right now. And the God who invites you to join this journey with Him of walking this life with all of its joy and all of its sorrow. With all of the rewards and all of the pain. And to join me right now. And the way that God is calling you to live your life is not so that you can lord it over anybody or live at the right hand or left hand in all of glory. But what God is calling you to is to live in this moment with the presence of God so real in your life that others are able to see God's presence in and through you. No, my friends. You're called to be a servant. Because I'm called to serve, not to be served. And your call is the same. Those who gain their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will gain it. Unless you become as a little child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. And sometimes we still don't get it. Because too often I hear among church people, I'm not going there because it doesn't do anything for me. What's in it for me? It's not about you and what's in it for you. It's about what God can do in and through you to transform this world. To be servants of all. Wells is an incredible place. And even this morning, I received a message on Facebook to something I had posted about the very presence of God that is felt here and how if anyone is living out God's kingdom work, it's here. I, I pray so. And I pray God can continue to give that, that message, that image to people who encounter Wells folk but we have to be intentional. And we have to keep remembering that we're called to serve, not be served. And we're called to give ourselves away so that God can continue to be used by us and in us and through us. Wells Fest for 35 years has been an incredible experience offering an opportunity to have fun, to have families have a safe place to come and enjoy wonderful music. And in the process, after the first year, to give everything that you're able to get in proceeds away. Not many folks do that. But I'm so grateful to be a part of a place where healing and wholeness is important <laughs> and where loving, caring, and sharing are all a part of how we live out our lives of discipleship. Servanthood calls for 
the mind, the heart, and the spirit to be in tune with the very presence of Christ. And that's our continuing challenge and our continuing call. What a blessing it is to give ourselves away so that God can find praise and it'll help someone a little bit along the way and God may receive the glory for all that we are. What are we setting our minds and our hearts and our actions toward? And how will God continue to transform us so that we can transform the world in the name of Jesus Christ? Well, amen Amen. and amen. What a wonderful blessing it is for us today to continue to live out this call to servanthood. And I believe that's exactly what we're doing in this moment. I want to invite Shea Pollard and Stacy and Nikita to come forward. Um, Both our chair of Wells Fest committee and Shea and and Stacy and Nikita who are on behalf of Grace House Ministries. We become quite a team. If any radio station needs anybody to share... Um, Stacy and Nikita and I and, and Shay with Jim Pollard's guidance and, and uh, Peggy Hampton's leading can, can just about do anything. So let us know if we need to be present to do that. So, uh, but what a blessing it is to be able to have this moment this year in this place today. Amen? Amen. 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 I just want to say thank you to everyone. I'm going to turn that just a little. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Um, Chris issued a commitment when we decided we could not go live uh, in person, uh, you know, festival, um, that he was going to support Grace House. And he was committed to that. And he kind of issued a challenge to, to ask if we would be committed to that as well. And you guys came through. A lot of you donated in whatever amount you were able. We had wonderful donors of goods and services and art and music. And Grace House was fabulous to work with. They are some workhorses over there. Amen. They are great. Um, and so we were able to uh, come together and do this thing. Uh, it was different. And it was a little weird sometimes. And <laughs> You know, some of us weren't always quite sure what needed to happen when, but, but it came together. And I just want to thank all of you for taking Chris's commitment and challenge seriously and doing everything you could to come together and to make this happen. So I'm very proud this year to be able to present a check to Grace House on behalf of Wells Church and Wells Fest for $62,000. One other comment, in in the process of our raising funds and sponsorship, we had someone who connected with a local foundation. And so in addition, this foundation made a check payable directly to Grace House in an additional amount of $10,000. We're being sure that we're able to get all of this yeah. <laughs> so people can see. There will be great opportunities for photo ops after this for those who want to join in with Stacy and Nikita and Shay and the big check. Uh, I said this morning it was a big check and uh, Bob Kerr said, Are you, is that key tonkel language for... <laughs> We know that this will not accomplish all the needs that Grace House Ministries has. But in a year when we step back, when a year that it was real easy to not do anything again, God has blessed and given life 
because of your faithfulness. So thank you again. I, thank you. I just, I just want to thank Wells Church and the Wells Fest Committee and Shay and Chris. This means so much to us. Thank you so much. And all God's people said, Amen. If I'm remembering correctly, what we were able to share with Extra Table was 60000 Correct me if I'm wrong, but I looked at the pictures. And so what Shay's just shared with you, because of these efforts, not only is it 62000 that came from here, but there's another ten that's been added to it. I don't know what God's stirring us to be and do. But we need to do something. And we need to trust God where God may be leading. So I invite you as a church to help keep listening. And to help keep taking the steps. And to help God know that we're open. And to have that vision clarified. What a wonderful way to end this time of celebration, but by gathering around God's table. I mean, that's what we do at home when we want to celebrate, is that we gather around the table. And that's what we do in church when we celebrate, is we gather around God's table. Because God has invited us all. And it wells and in the United Methodist Church, all are welcome to come. To God's table. Because we believe God offers the invitation. I hope you were able to receive a prepackaged communion set on your way in that we can share together. Uh, if not, there are some available there in the back, and you can certainly participate by either going to get you one or, or sharing in that. On the night Jesus gave himself up for us, right after this teaching that his disciples didn't get, he made one last effort. And he gathered a loaf of bread and he took it before him and he said, he broke the bread and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup and he blessed it and said, drink from this all of you. It's my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Very common Simple elements, bread and wine that they would have encountered every day. And yet in this moment, maybe the moment the disciples got it. When every time they saw a loaf of bread and broke it together. And every time they took from the cup and drank wine. They remembered that Jesus' presence was always near. And journeyed with them every day. We give thanks today. For God's redeeming love. For God's forgiving grace. And for his empowering presence. That leads us to be his people. O oh Lord pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Through your spirit make us one with Christ and one with each other. And one in unity to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
In the tradition of the disciples, we're going to eat our meal, sing a hymn, and go home. So stand and join me <laughs> as we share it today. Amen. I want to invite those who served on the Wells Fest committee or who were involved in Wells Fest to stick around for a photo op because I think it would be neat to have us all behind it. Wear your mask and come forward. Go in peace. <laughs> 